Hi guys and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. So we're jumping back into the knurling project this week and hopefully by the end of today's video we're going to get the main pivot arms all finished and ready to be fitted back onto the tool. So let's do this. Before we head over to the milling machine then I just want to give you guys an idea of what these finished arms are going to look like when all the machining is done. So these are a set of 3D printed ones that I've designed from the original drawings and then just 3D printed them. So this is sort of an idea of sort of size and dimensions that these things are going to be. Let's just quickly strip this tool down and give you an idea of the features that we're going to have to machine onto these parts. So this is what the overall arm needs to look like once it's all finished and to get to this point we're going to be starting from a piece of raw bar stock. So this is going to fit on there but it's going to require a little bit of machining work. So to do so we've got a few compound angles that we're going to have to do here and a bit of machine work. And to begin with I can see that there's a little bit of material that needs to be removed on the end here. So to do so, I'm just going to use the bandsaw and remove the bulk of that material. So start on the bandsaw and then we'll head over to the milling machine. With the bar stock all now cut down, we can move over to the milling machine. So the first procedure we need to do is just machine these to length. And to do so, I'm going to be doing an end mill process just to take off any cut marks and also take these down to dimension. With our first side now machined down, we can get our initial measurement to give us an idea of how much more we need to machine down on the unmachined side. And we're aiming for about 91.3 mil here. And yeah, we're pretty close to that. So once both of these have been machined to length, I can just double check to make sure they're pretty close to each other by having them up on the surface plate. And happy that they're plus or minus 0.1 mil within each other, I can then move over to the mill and start the next procedures. So this setup that I've got here I've got both of the bar stock now on top of each other and we're going to be drilling in some holes just to make sure those holes are exactly in the same position for both pieces of stock. So this furthest hole here which is going to be acting as our pivot hole that needs to be reamed to a quarter inch. So drilled it out to 6mm and just coming back in now with the quarter inch reamer. Once that was all done and I'm happy with that, I can then move across and drill out for the other hole. So eventually this is going to become a 6mm tapped hole. So for now I'm going to drill this out to 5mm and leave it there. Now I've thought about a lot of fancy ways of doing these next operations and the best method I thought I'd come up with is using a 3D printed model of the drawing. I'm going to scribe round it and then that will give me the marks that I need to then machine to. So to get this thing in position I was using some quarter inch dowel pins and a 5mm bolt and then I could just scribe around my block until I had some good lines to machine to. With that all being done now and looking pretty nice, I can then bolt the two pieces of metal together which will become our two arms once we're done and then that way all the machining I can do in one procedure rather than having to try repeating it for both. Using the good old 3D printer again, I've 3D printed some angled blocks that I can stick under the workpiece 
which will allow me to machine down to the lines that I've marked prior. The good thing about this build is these lines don't have to be super accurate, so a 3D printed angled block is going to work perfect here. So with that first angled piece all machined out now and pretty close to those scribe lines I'm going to work on machining out this bottom section here. Brilliant, didn't actually hit record on that bit. Basically to summarise what I've done there, I've just flipped the part in the vise, sat it on some flat parallels and I've just machined away this flat surface until we've hit our scribe line. Next thing we need to do now is set another angle block under here and machine out this slight angled piece here. Last procedure I want to get done then while these pieces of stock are still bolted together is get the sort of half low part machined out of the top. So me trying to be smart thought it would be a good idea to do this by plunging in with a 20mm end mill. And to be honest it started off pretty well but towards the end we got a lot of judder and also a lot of chatter. So I sort of regret doing this really. But that being said it still got the job done. Surprisingly then, given the dodginess of that last operation, these parts have turned out pretty well so far. So the whole plunging in with a 20mm M mill didn't go as I planned it would in my head. It's one of those things I immediately regretted it after I started the operation, but I was too far in. But I'm quite happy with the surface finish it's given there. The only downside is this recess here is now slightly larger than what the drawing states but I can accommodate for that for the little parts that are going to sit in here sort of half moon shape recesses so that's not too bad next thing I need to do now then is I'm going to add the radiuses onto the ends of the part I think once these are on there it's really going to make these arms look a lot more smarter than what they currently do so to do that I've split the parts up because I thought if it ends up going wrong I'd prefer it go wrong on one of the arms rather than two because then I'd have to scrap two parts instead of one. So to begin with, I'm going to head back over to the milling machine on the rotary table and using the fixture that I made in a previous video, I'm going to start with the quarter inch holes, do the radiuses on that side and then move over to these ones here. Since making this fixture, what I enjoy about using it is the fact that it's so simple to set up and can be done really quick. So by having the insert in the collet, all you've got to do is wait until you can locate that centrally into this Morse taper free attachment. And then with a square on the back of the turntable, just make sure the workpiece is running perpendicular to that. And then from there, it's just a case of machine out these curved features. So that's all the fancy radius is done now on both parts of the tools and really happy actually how both of those came out they're pretty much identical of each other which is exactly what we want from this tool. So next operation I need to do now is in the top of these radii on top I need to make a slot in each of these to accept the lead screw which will act as the clamp for these tools. So that's the next thing we need to do. Ignoring the slot then that's already been, been machined in this thing by machining with Joe in parallel universe number two, we're going to focus on machining the slots in the lobe section. So first procedure really is to get a nice flat bottom there to accept the drill bits which we're going to be taking the bulk of the material out with.
with that section now flat enough then we can come in with a 6 mil drill bit and just drill this out in a section of passes. So it was actually one of you guys left a comment below when I've done procedures like this in the past. They suggested using a drill bit to take out the majority of the metal. So ever since that comment, that's what I do. And yeah, you guys are right. It speeds up the process a hell of a lot easier. So I'm aiming for a quarter inch slotted hole here. So starting off with six mil, I can remove the mo most of this material. And then after that, I'm gonna come back in with a quarter inch end mill. So as most of the material has been removed from this, I can now blast through with this end mill, plunging my weight down and taking progressively deeper and deeper cuts as I go. And with that all done, that's the slotted hole all finished. Back to parallel universe number one machining with Joe then and we need to machine out the slot which is going to accept the knurling wheels. So to do so I've just zeroed off the bottom of my slitting saw onto the workpiece and now I'm just coming down the distance I need plus the thickness of the slitting saw. From there then it's just a case of taking deeper and deeper cuts as I go to remove mass from this slot. So unfortunately the slitting saw that I was using wasn't quite the right thickness for the knurling wheels that I needed. So taking a couple of measurements and a quick bit of math I knew roughly how much I had to come down. And with the slitting saw now adjusted I can take out the final bit of material. And final little procedure left to do here is after reaming out this hole to be a 6mm is just come back in and tap the other side out for a 6mm tap. And that workpiece is all done. So here we are again in a position to assemble this and see how this week's progress has come along. So these are the arms that we've machined in today's video. Uh, it's basically two very identical arms. Only difference is the offset in which the bolts go through this to locate the knurling wheels are just slightly offset. So let's assemble this and see how it looks. Hopefully everything is going to fit. Lovely. So these are quarter inch reamed holes going into quarter inch dowel pins. So really nice snug fit there. And then as we know this goes on top. Du, du, du. Alan. And there we have the knurling tool with this week's progression. So just letting you guys know off camera I did take down these countersunk holes a little bit more so they should sit a little bit flush. But pretty glad how that's looking this week.